everybody, what's going on? Thanks for swinging by. I sure do appreciate it. If this is your first time on the channel, my name is Mark. Oh, hi, Mark. Welcome to Fit and Fire. Let's get into this video. This time I wanted to do a overview of Kalashnikon. That is a two-gun shooting event that was just last weekend in Houston, Missouri that focuses on the Kalashnikov rifle. Uh, in order for you to compete, you have to have an AK style rifle. So we're talking AK-47s, AK-74s, uh, 5.56 AKs like the SAM-5 or the Beryl or M90, something like that. Uh, I've saw some Galils and Galil Aces and even saw a VZ-58 as well. But with that being said, I wanted to do an overview for you guys to share my experiences of my very first Kalashnikon. I'm going to go ahead and spoil it with you guys. I'm hooked and I want to do this every single year, whether it be the summer shooting event or the winter shooting event. I'm really excited about this competition. Not to mention it's fairly close to me, only about six hours from where I live and I was super excited about that. Now, this is a very interesting two-gun match because uh, it is over the course of three days. The first day, Friday, is a team shooting event. So all the stages on Friday are going to be shot in pairs. So you and a partner are going to navigate each one of the stages. And then you have uh, Saturday and Sunday's shooting events as well. Each one of the three days are considered its own shooting event. So if you wanted to just shoot Saturday, you could do that. If you just wanted to do a team event on Friday, you could do that. If you want to do all three days or any combination in between, you can do that as well. So that is something I really, really did like about how they set it up. Now, what I really liked about the shooting event is the fact that this is a two-gun match that really challenges you on a number of different Very levels. Yep. Not only is it going to challenge you physically because you're going to have to uh, move fast and move from one position to another, just going to get your heart rate up and get your breathing up and stuff like that. You may have to carry things that could weigh 60 plus pounds as well from one shooting position to another. Um, but you're also going to have to think through the stages as well. We'll talk about some of that in this video, uh, but the third aspect of it as well is that um, you're really going to be challenged on your rifle's setup. They have three separate divisions, which is a little bit different than how like Kalash Bash goes about it. At Kalash Bash, they have, you know, like the iron sight division, and then that one is broken down into heavy calibers versus light calibers. So 762 by 39 versus 5.56 or 5.45 by 39. Kalashnikon doesn't do that. You have iron sights, you have non-magnified optics, and you have magnified optics division. Doesn't matter what caliber you're running, you have three divisions and you're allowed to compete in any of those three divisions. You just have to make your division known before you start shooting. So that was something that was pretty interesting, but they also really try to challenge your rifle's setup in so many different ways, whether it be, you know, trying to shoot fast or trying to shoot accurately very close or trying to shoot extreme long distances up to 600 yards. Uh, they really work on challenging all aspects of your abilities. And that's something I really, really did like about it. Now, each day is going to be split up into six stages. Uh, there are obviously squads at each one of those stages, and once you get done with a stage, you move on to the next one, uh, which is pretty standard for a lot of the uh, two-gun competitions yeah, that I've shot. Okay. The you ready? frustrating yeah. stage for me was the dang baseballs on the pull, pull noodles. And that is one of the stages that showed my gap in my rifles setup because I took the time to zero my three power primary arms micro prism uh, optic on my SAM 5. I took painstaking time to make sure that my, uh, my setup was done as best as I possibly could get it and ran premium ammo and all of that jazz. But I didn't take the time to understand where my offset is with my optic to the barrel. So shooting <laughs> targets at like 
three, five, seven, 15, 20 yards. Uh, I didn't quite understand where that offset was, so uh, I was missing some of these targets on Saturday and just really had a frustrating time like everybody did with that particular uh, stage. Now fast forward to Sunday because you shoot a lot of the same stages both Saturday and Sunday. They just change some of the setup around uh, or maybe change how you do things. I was a little bit more confident. I understood how my offset was because I was able to learn that through uh, the different stages on Saturday and did a lot better. I did leave one baseball up uh, after I parred out on time at 180 seconds, and that was something I wasn't used to. All of the stages had a par time of 180 seconds, uh, which, you know, kind of helped keep things flowing uh, so people don't take, you know, five, six minutes on a stage. So that was pretty nice. Another one of the stages that I really did like was the shoot house because you didn't get to see what was inside the shoot house before you started that stage. You just had to go in blind. And I really, really did like that. However, this is where my first criticism of Kalashnikon is going to come up because I didn't understand the course of fire. I will admit that's on me. I should have asked questions. However, if you have a failure to uh, neutralize or a procedural error in the order of which you shoot your uh, targets, because they describe that uh, ahead of time, then you are given a time penalty. And what normally you get for a failure to neutralize or a procedural is either like 10 seconds for a failure to neutralize or a like three second penalty for a procedural not the end of the world, you can fight back from that in later stages. Kalashnikon, however, were 30 second penalties for both. So in my first shoot house stage on Saturday, I really messed that one up. I ended up missing seven targets and then had a procedural, but that's four minutes worth of penalty time added to my score. And for right, someone who's so trying to be extremely competitive and really trying to push here. myself outside of the um, so you know, you comfort zone and competing against people you, like AK those? Mario no, and Clayco 47 uh, and yeah, uh, Big were. Papa Fluffy and even in my squad I had AK every day um, and okay. even uh, a retired uh, LEO guy named Brian Moon, who's a fantastic shooter, uh, you know, trying to keep up with them. That stage really messed me up and uh, just kind of disheartened me and really didn't want me to try my hardest the rest of the day because I already knew I was out. I was done. At the end of the day, I ended up on Saturday uh, 61st out of 105, and that one stage really uh, took me down a whole bunch. So I would just ask the folks over at Kalashnikon if they were going to do um, something like that, they would relook their penalty seconds, uh, maybe bring those down a little bit to help some of us who are really trying to compete the ability to fight back from mistakes in later stages. Just, just my kind of take on that aspect of it. We did have one stage that was a lot of fun that uh, you didn't get a chance to use your rifle. You had to use uh, a rifle that was provided to, to you and you were able to run it in full auto. That was really a lot of fun. Uh, big thanks to the sponsor of that um, stage. Uh, I think it's uh, Evictus Strategies. Uh, they are a company out of Tulsa who does uh, AK builds. They do build classes and uh, you can go down and build a AK or a Galil without any parts or kits or anything. You just you just pay to go down there and um, to do the build class and they have everything that you need. They have all the kits, they have the tools and you're able to zero your uh, rifle after you build it at 300 yards. I thought that was really pretty cool. They had a stage, you get to run full auto, and uh, was, that was a lot of fun. It's actually one of my best stages. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. One of the things about trusting your equipment and making sure that you're uh, going to be challenged in your equipment is their stage on Sunday that you shot 200 to 600 yards. That was a really fun stage. 
Uh, I unfortunately had to shoot it twice because I did have a issue with my SAM-5, some type of malfunction that jammed up the action and I was able to be pulled off, uh, disassembled my AK, looked at everything, everything was fine, reassembled it and it was good to go. I don't understand what would happen. Um, but uh, in doing so, I chewed up a lot of my premium ammunition that I sighted my uh, micro prism to and was how I had to borrow some ammunition from uh, Jim who runs a lot of the Kalashnikov uh, the Texas Kalashnikov events uh, he was he was clutch man let me tell you that guy came in and was like hey I got all the ammo you need just take what you need and we'll worry about it later uh, I was using 77 grain OTB uh, AAC bullets and he had the same brand of bullets only he had the Sierra Match King so that changed my dope on my rifle but even still trying to figure out my dope on the fly with that different style of bullet uh, I was able to reach out and clear the entire stage by shooting 600 yards and that 600 yard shot was uh, first shot on target. So that was really super cool. I was very, very happy with myself. Usually reshoots don't go well because you get yourself in your own mind. Uh, but for me, it sure did work out. Uh, I can tell you that the 300 yard mover, oh man, that one, that one really frustrated not only me, but a lot of other people as well. And then naturally with a lot of two gun events, they have stages where you are just going to burn down the stage. You're gonna go as fast as you possibly can. And uh, it's, it's a lot of fun to say the least. One of the other things I wanted to jump in here really quick about the people who organized the match is the fact that they listen to the competitors. We did have one stage where uh, you had to use a firearm that wasn't yours and it was having a lot of issues. Um, not surprisingly, it was a high point carbine, uh, but when they first started the match, if you had any issues with it, uh, well, you just kind of ate the penalties. You know, if you left some targets standing or you lost time because it jammed up or whatever, you just kind of ate it. And um, a lot of people didn't think that that was fair. So some people went to the match director and said, hey man, we need to relook at this. The match director listened and he's like, yep, you're right. They switched it and, you know, it really did uh, make the rest of the day a little bit more enjoyable. And I really do appreciate them taking the time to uh, listen to us on that particular stage. The biggest takeaway that I have for you guys when it comes to your rifle's setup is make sure that you are setting your rifle up smartly. There's a lot of people that was running around with bipods on their rifles and they used them. But the problem is, is if you attach something to your rifle, you have to run that the entire match. So if you have like lights and lasers and bipods, if you start the match with those things on, they have to stay on. Obviously, if you're using a certain optic uh, with your rifle uh, and something happens, uh, you either have to replace it with something very similar or you have to walk away. Ultimately, it was really cool to be around a lot of the uh, people that I share space with in social media, like um, 
I've already mentioned uh, AK Mario and Clayco. Uh, my buddy MK, we uh, did some training together several years ago and haven't been able to reconnect. This was an event that we were able to get back together and hang out and chit chat and, and just you know BS with each other. And I thought that was uh, really super cool. These are the events that bring people together. They are extremely welcoming. We encourage everybody. We're cheering everybody on throughout uh, the shooting day and it's been a lot of fun. I encourage you guys to swing on by and check it out. Obviously they've got uh, stuff posted on Instagram. I've been posting stuff on my Instagram feed of some of the things that happened uh, while I was there and so has a whole bunch of other people as well. Just you know hit up the uh, hashtag Kalashnikon to check those out. Uh, swing by their website and their AK files, a lot of good information as well. So uh, I will have to tell you that if you are going to get involved in this shooting competition, you've got to be Johnny on the spot as soon as they open up uh, slots for everybody. They give first dibs to people who have already competed in Kalashnikon, and then uh, if there are new people who want to jump in, they have to wait for open registration. And uh, I will tell you that when they opened it up to everybody, I got a text message from Clayco and he was like, hey, you need to get in on this right now. I went over to practice score to register and by the time I got done registering, all the slots were gone. I was put on a wait list. Now, if that happens to you, don't fret because maybe in about two weeks, a slot opens up. That's what happened to me. I was able to get in and off I went. The really cool thing too is this is kind of out in the middle of nowhere in South Central Missouri and so there's not a lot of places to stay. There's not too many hotels in that area. There's some Airbnbs and there's some smaller motels but they also allow camping on site as well. I've got a rooftop tent on my Tacoma just you know pulled in set everything up and I was good to go. So uh, a lot of good opportunities for people to get out there. And even if you're not able to shoot the event, you can still come out and uh, be a spectator and watch everything go down. Uh, it's like, I think $25 to get in and that covers the range fees uh, to help out and uh, kind of keep the, uh, the events afloat financially, I guess. So really good, fun event. I really did enjoy everything about it. Again, if you guys are interested in doing a deep dive into each one of the stages, uh, go ahead and let me know and I can do kind of a live chat with everybody and uh, kind of break down all the different stages. Uh, most of the B-roll that I have, you're, you've already seen in this video. So um, again, if you're interested, let me know down in the comment section and we'll set up a live chat to do a Q&A after action review. So with that being said, I really do appreciate you guys swinging by. I'm going to go to as many Clash of Cons as I can moving forward, and I hope to see you guys there as well. As always, freedom through strength. We'll catch you guys later. Take care, guys. Bye.